Hey guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. So today I want to talk about Black Mental Health Matters. Because it does. The reason I want to talk about this is because as someone who has dealt with my own mental health struggles, and I've seen mental health struggles all over, um, checked and unchecked, I studied psychology when I was at Virginia Tech, I have basically lived uh, black mental health. And I, as I've grown and as I've gotten older, I've realized that this is such a taboo topic that no one wants to talk about. And if you've been following me for any number of times, you know those are my favorite subjects to talk about. So, first thing I want to talk about, we have to break the stigma. Going to therapy is not just for crazy people. It's actually a really beneficial thing like even if you don't have a chronic or a uh, diagnosed um, mental health issue going to therapy is a really great place to deal with the struggles that everyone faces on a daily basis we all face grief we all face loss we all face disappointment we all have insecurities that we have to deal with we all have issues to deal with and going to therapy is a place where you can deal with them in a way that's unbiased so you're getting a third it's basically getting a third party to help you deal with the issues that you're dealing with because when you're venting to your friends or family everyone has an opinion and everyone has this need to insert their advice when you're going to a therapist it's more like you you're having a free space to get things off of your chest without feeling like you're gonna judge me because how many of us can recognize family and friends are the biggest judges like ever so we have to break that stigma therapy is not just for crazy people so for me like i when i was dealing with the grief of miscarrying twins i was in therapy every week every week that grief was so consuming that it was the only like i literally was willing to do whatever it took to deal with it and actually face it not just push it under the rug not just move on not just assume everything will be okay in time like i had to actively work on healing so i was in therapy every week i was journaling pretty much every day um i was going on vacation by myself like whatever it took to actually be okay and deal with it and i would have cry sessions um i would Driving to work, I would play songs to trigger the tears just to get it out my system so that I wouldn't have the tears or the breakdown randomly at work. Like, you just had, I had to deal with it. Um, One thing I would like to challenge us to do is to treat mental health just as important as physical health. For example, if you randomly started bleeding and you couldn't figure out why you were bleeding, you would see a doctor, right? You would probably go to the ER. Probably even call 911 if you just out of the blue started bleeding. How many times have you randomly started crying or randomly gotten sad? And what was your response? It's the same thing. Like, we treat our physical health well, injuries to our physical health. So, because sometimes we don't live a healthy life, but we do treat um, injuries or anything that's hurting. We, you know, we do something about it. If you have a physical ailment, we're very quick to either whether it's a home remedy, whether it's um, going to see the doctor if it's continuing to act up, even the emergency room, anything like that. But what home remedies do you use for your sanity? What home remedies do you use for stress management? What doctors are you seeing when you just can't get a handle on the sadness or the heartbreak? We have to realize depression is like cancer for your mind. It is literally your mind attacking itself. That's what cancer is. It's when your body starts to attack itself. Depression, particularly when it's long-term or chronic or comes and goes very frequently, 
it's your mind literally attacking yourself. And it's not something where you can just be like, hmm, let me turn on the switch and let me be happy. Like, anyone who's dealing with someone who's, um, if you're around anyone who's dealing with depression, please don't tell them, just be happy. Like, it doesn't work. It does not work. They don't want to be sad. But they need help to get through that. I've dealt with depression literally my whole life. As far back as I can remember, I've had depression. I've had incidents of suicidal thoughts and attempts um, and low self-esteem and all types of issues that I've had to deal with. It wasn't until I got to college that I actually went to therapy for the first time. And it was because I had developed the eating disorder when I was in college. I was suffering from severe depression at the result of a very important relationship kind of dissolving and I ended up developing eating disorder I've never been the type of person to not eat like I love food like love food but it got to the point where I couldn't eat I, I was not hungry and when I would force myself to eat I would get sick and I had a friend of mine and he was like you need to go see a therapist. And it was the best thing that has ever happened to me because it opened my eyes to what the the deep-rooted issues. Like, a lot of times we see these issues and we're like, oh, I'm just dealing with that. Oh, I'm just dealing with that. But it's usually connected to some deep-rooted issues. It usually is. But we cannot continue to suffer in silence. You just can't. You, you just can't. You have to speak up. And if the people around you aren't listening, find someone who will. Whether that's a counselor at your church, whether that's an actual therapist, which most insurance companies will pay for therapy. Like, every time I suggest somebody go to therapy to deal with the issues that they're dealing with, they're always like, oh, I can't afford it. Mental health is a part of most healthcare plans. Seriously. Like, for real. Like, honestly, I I pay for my therapist now, but that's only because I switched health insurances and I didn't want to switch therapists. But health insurance includes therapy. And I'll give you a tip on finding a therapist because there are bad therapist relationships. Not bad, but unproductive, right? What I've learned that helps is to find someone that looks like you. So if you go to the, like, if, the, if your health insurance has a website where you can um, find, like, choose a therapist, sort by race, sort by gender. It makes a difference. It really does. So race, gender, and then also you can sort by issues that you're dealing with. So if you've dealt with depression, if you've dealt with suicide, if you've dealt with PTSD, if you're a vet, um... If you've dealt with issues um, regarding your sexual orientation, if you've dealt with divorce in your family, like you can sort by those issues, get someone who can actually relate to you because I promise you, there's nothing a white man can tell me about my mental health. It, we just won't relate, nor a white woman, honestly. Like I've been with white female therapists and it just was not the connection that I needed because you really can't tell me how to be a black woman. You can't. But if we're being honest about it, neither can a black man. Now, he can tell me better than a white woman. Don't ask me why. But a black man can relate to me more than a white woman simply because you get the... There really is a difference in how different races experience life. So, sort by race, sort by gender, then sort by... Um, mental health issues that you are likely either likely to have experienced or have experienced in your past or have issues with in your family or have seen like you may not be an alcoholic but if you were raised by someone who's an alcoholic it may be helpful to to see someone who has dealt with those issues because believe it or not the issues that our parents have dealt with impact us on a daily basis daily basis and we are more prone to dealing with that like, I actually had that conversation with my father. I said, you have to realize my father's mother and my mother's father were both hospitalized for mental health. I am at high risk for mental health issues. And I have to take an active approach to dealing with that. 
So just because it wasn't you that was hospitalized for mental health, like you really have to, uh, you have to recognize, like it puts you at risk. And the best thing you can do for your children and your children's children is to deal with the issues before they become hospitalization necessary. Okay. Okay. So I'm open to having the conversation. Um, The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is being receptive and understanding of those who are hurting. Sometimes all they need from you is to just listen. Just listen. If people want your advice, they will ask. Sometimes they're just calling to vent. Listen. And before you throw advice in their face, ask them, do you just need a listening ear or would you like to hear advice as well? It's a really simple question. Another really easy question so that you can get this right. How can I help you? What do you need from me? Don't assume you know the answer to their problems. Ask them, what do you need from me? All right, guys. Um, any comments, thoughts, I want to hear them in the, in the comment section, write them down below. I want to hear from you guys. Thanks.